हेलो स्टूडेंट्स एज वी ऑल नो फार्माकोकाइनेटिक्स इज द स्टडी ऑफ एब्जॉर्बशन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मेटाबॉलिज्म एंड एक्सक्रीशन ऑफ ड्रग बाय द बॉडी नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ एब्जॉर्बशन एंड द फैक्टर्स अफेक्टिंग एब्जॉर्बशन ऑफ ड्रग नाउ दिस वीडियो इज द सेकेंड इन द सीरीज ऑफ वीडियोज ऑन फार्माकोकाइनेटिक्स now let's uh, quickly understand the concept of absorption before discussing factors affecting absorption of drug now absorption is the movement of drug into the blood stream after its administration and like the intravenous route uh, where a drug is injected directly into the systemic blood a drug has to pass across cell membrane to reach the blood circulation for example let's say a drug is administered orally and the drug reaches the stomach now the drug has to pass across the wall of stomach so as to reach the blood circulation now cell membranes uh, all the cell membranes in the body are made up of phospholipids and proteins now the wall of stomach is also made up of phospholipids so a drug has to cross Uh, the cell membranes in order to reach the blood circulation now absorption or transport of drug across a cell membrane occurs primarily in four ways uh, these are passive diffusion facilitated diffusion active transport and endocytosis now let's revise each transport process uh, quickly uh, let's first talk about the passive diffusion now most of the drugs are transported or absorbed by the process of passive diffusion now it is termed as passive as the drug moves from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration that means the drug moves along its concentration gradient so no energy is required in this transportation and no carriers are also required in this transportation now look at this diagram this diagram shows a cell membrane now this cell membrane is made up of phospholipid bilayer and the protein molecules now in between are present the aqueous pores now this is the extracellular fluid and this is the cell cytoplasm now drug is present in the high concentration in the extracellular fluid and the lipophilic drugs they diffuse rapidly through the phospholipid molecules and they reach the cell cytoplasm while the hydrophilic drugs they diffuse across the aqueous pores which are found in the phospholipid cell membrane so this is how the process of passive diffusion occurs and this is how the drug is absorbed by the process of passive diffusion now second uh, transport process is the facilitated diffusion now as the name suggest carrier proteins are required carrier pro proteins facilitate the transport or the absorption of the drug now look at this diagram now the drug uh, here shown in the uh, green color the drug binds to the carrier proteins and then the carrier proteins undergo conformational change now this causes transportation of drug inside the cell cytoplasm now transportation is along the concentration gradient that is from higher concentration to the lower concentration and therefore the process does not require energy now very important by this process large drug molecules are transported across a cell membrane or large uh, molecules are absorbed uh, next type of transport process is the active transport now this type of transport is termed as active transport as here transportation requires energy and transportation of drug occurs against the concentration gradient that is from lower concentration of drug to the higher concentration of drug and the energy required for the transportation is generated by the hydrolysis of adenosine triphosphate now look at this resting cell now here concentration of sodium is high in the extracellular fluid whereas concentration of potassium is high in the intracellular fluid now uh, this is a cell uh, this is the sodium potassium atpase uh, this is an ionic pump and this ionic pump transport uh, sodium and potassium against the concentration gradient that is uh, sodium is transported from its uh, lower concentration Uh, towards the higher concentration and similarly 
potassium is also transported from its uh, lower concentration towards its higher concentration and the energy that is required for this transportation is obtained by the uh, hydrolysis of adenosine triphosphate so this energy that is liberated is utilized by this pump for the transportation now the fourth transport process is the endocytosis now exceptionally large size drugs are transported by this process now look at this figure now this is the cell membrane the cell membrane forms a cavity and this cavity encloses the drug and this cavity it forms a vesicle the vesicle is then uh, released uh, intracellularly and the drug is also transported in the cytoplasm uh, now let's uh, discuss factors affecting absorption of drug one by one now first is the concentration of drug now drugs in higher concentration are absorbed faster as the diffusion of drug depends upon the concentration gradient now passive diffusion and facilitated diffusion are the most common transport mechanisms now second is the aqueous solubility now drugs uh, drugs should dissolve in aqueous biophase to get absorbed so drugs in the watery solution like for example syrups are absorbed faster than in the solid forms uh, like for example tablets or capsules third is the area of absorbing surface larger is the area of absorbing surface faster is absorption for example absorption is faster from small intestine because of the larger surface area compared to the absorption from the stomach fourth is the flow of blood to the absorbing surface now as the drug is present in the blood more is the flow of blood to the absorbing surface faster or higher is the absorption now as initially there is no drug in the cells or in the tissues blood circulation maintains the concentration gradient and thus speed up the process of absorption of drug now fifth is a, a very important parameter it is the routes of administration now in intravenous route as a drug is injected directly into the systemic circulation absorption is 100% now let's discuss absorption from different routes of administration one by one now uh, let's uh, understand how absorption occurs from the oral route of administration now oral route is also called as enteral route enteral refers to git that is a gastrointestinal tract so once the drug is swallowed it reaches gastrointestinal tract for example it reaches stomach now the drug has to pass across the wall of gastrointestinal tract so the first barrier to the absorption of drug is the passage through the epithelial lining of gastrointestinal tract which is lipoidal in nature that is which is made up of phospholipids so only lipid soluble that is non ionized lipid soluble drugs can pass through the wall of gastrointestinal tract uh, very important to remember that only lipid soluble non ionized form of drug can pass through the cell membranes can pass through the wall of git now drugs are basically are uh, of two types uh, weak organic acids and weak organic bases now let's first understand absorption of weak organic acids for example aspirin aspirin is acetyl salicylic acid aspirin is a weak organic acid and it is primarily absorbed from the stomach now look at this chemical equation now here ha ha represents uh, a weak organic acid ha represents acetyl salicylic acid now this ha or the acetyl salicylic acid it dissociates to produce hydrogen ion and acetyl salicylate now very important to remember that weak organic acids they always release hydrogen ion on dissociation since they are releasing hydrogen ion on dissociation they are termed as weak organic acids so aspirin dissociates to produce hydrogen ion and it produces the acetyl salicylate now a uh, very important to remember that uh, acetyl salicylic acid is the non ionized 
form of the drug it is a non ionized form of drug that is lipid soluble and easily pass across the lipoidal epithelial lining of git so this acetyl salicylic acid it easily crosses the biological membranes while acetyl salicylate is the ionized form it is a ionized form of aspirin and it is a ionized form that is water soluble and this ionized form it remains uh, dissolved in the aqueous biophase inside the stomach now water is a polar solvent and drug with electrical charge easily remains dissolved in the water so uh, it is a, a ionized form uh, which remains dissolved in the aqueous biophase in the stomach whereas it is the it is a non ionized lipid soluble form of the aspirin that easily crosses the wall of stomach and reaches the blood circulation so the aspirin occurs in two forms one is the unionized lipid soluble form and the other is the ionized water soluble form now very important uh, to note that this reaction is a uh, is a reversible reaction it means that uh, the aspirin can remain in this form as well as in in this form now if the environment is highly acidic for example in the stomach in the stomach the ph is 1 to 3 so the environment is highly acidic now in the high acidity in the stomach the reaction shifts towards the backward direction and most of the aspirin remains in the unionized lipid soluble form and thus absorption of the aspirin occurs primarily in the stomach now relative concentration of uh, ionized as well as unionized form of a drug depends upon the ph at the site of absorption and both these forms uh, both these forms of the drugs are important they are essential for effective absorption of drug it is a uh, ionized form which remains uh, dissolved in the aqueous biophase whereas it is the unionized form it is a unionized or it is a non ionized lipid soluble form that crosses the wall of git and gets absorbed in the blood uh, now let's understand the absorption of uh, weak organic base now weak organic bases are primarily absorbed from the small intestine uh, now let's understand how let's uh, take the example of codeine codeine is a weak organic base now weak organic bases Uh, they possess uh, amino group and are represented as rnh2 and uh, uh, a hydrogen ion attaches to them and they get ionized uh, they form um, rnh3 positive so weak organic bases uh, they exist in the non ionized lipid soluble form as well as ionized water soluble form now as we have already seen for absorption Uh, of a drug it is a non ionized form that is required now in alkaline environment or if acidity is less that is in the small intestine the reaction shifts towards the backward direction and most of the drug is found to be present in the non ionized form so weak bases uh, they are absorbed Uh, from the basic ph that is from the alkaline environment from the small intestine so in conclusion we can say that it is the unionized form or it is a non ionized form of the drug that is that is uh, absorbed across the wall of git and weak organic uh, acids like the aspirin are absorbed from the stomach whereas the weak organic bases like the codeine uh, they are absorbed from the small intestine Uh, now let's uh, talk about absorption of a drug from the subcutaneous and intramuscular route now in these routes a drug is administered uh, close to the capillaries now lipid soluble drugs they are rapidly absorbed across the wall of capillaries now intramuscular absorption is faster than the subcutaneous absorption now absorption is faster and is more predictable in uh, as uh, in intramuscular and subcutaneous routes compared to the oral route now apart from this application of heat enhances absorption uh, 
because application of heat in the subcutaneous or the intramuscular root increases blood flow to the surface of absorption. Now vasoconstrictors like adrenaline injected with a drug retard the absorption. Now uh, then uh, 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 let's talk about the absorption from the topical surfaces like skin, mucous membrane etc. Now systemic absorption that is absorption in uh, absorption of drug in the systemic circulation depends upon the lipid solubility of drug. More is the lipid solubility of drug more will be its absorption. Now drugs like hyoscine, fentanyl, glycerol trinitrate, nicotine, testosterone, astradiol these are all lipid soluble and these are absorbed from the topical surfaces. So this is in brief on absorption and factors affecting absorption of drug. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.